Hello guys! So today we will be doing another um, grocery haul. Go to here. Extra long lasting classic bubbleless time. So this week um, I did buy quite a bit of stuff because so many things are going into season and I really do prefer to like eat a lot of fruits and vegetables when they're in season. So, um, on my first purchases here is some blueberries. Now, I know some of these are, like, in season in other areas or starting to come into season. But I had these on sale for a two for four at my local Hannah Fruits. I ended up getting two of these. Um, really good on, like, yogurt, cereals, waffles, or just straight up. I do make a lot of fruit salads and stuff at this time of year. And I also got some Driscoll's strawberries. There's a little condensation because I had them in the fridge. But these were also a two for four. Pretty much when I walked into the local Hannah Fruits, um, they had all the berries and stuff laid out. And I was like, yep, here we go. My favorite, like, it's a genuine cause for celebration when the produce is on sale for me. Um, I ended up picking up some Romaine Hearts. Fresh Express. These ones, I believe, were $3.99. Um, I'm planning to do some veggie burgers and stuff. And I've been using, I've already used up one of these on veggie burgers and what I don't use will go into a salad so these are like my second favorite types of lettuce for burgers and things um, I usually get one that's like some sort of buttery green lettuce and it comes in like a clamshell packaging but they didn't have that so I picked up what I thought was the second best which is the romaine hearts also picked up some tomatoes here. They're all like starting to fall off the stem. But um also got these to use for the burgers and salad and stuff like that. Someone in the last video was like, girl, where are your vegetables at? And I was like, that's a very good, that's a very good um, question and point to make. So I feel like I um I usually do keep a lot of like version vegetables on. I I've got some green beans here. They've been cut. I get a lot of frozen vegetables because I'm kind of lazy. So when I come home from work, I if I'm gonna cook something and I need a vegetable side, I'm usually not patient enough to prepare one, so I'll just like throw these in a pot with some water and call it a day. <laughs> but um so I do a lot of frozen kind of like in the winter time and springtime especially when all the vegetables that are fresh look kind of suspicious. But now I'll be doing a lot more frozen stuff so it's a little more fun to take a look at. <laughs> um also got some super sweet low corn. Again, a fruits brand. Um, I'll be using this. I put it on salads or when I make burritos. And if the filling, I use corn for that. And there is actually a pretty decent difference, I think, between the super sweet variety and the um, just generic corn. This really does have a sweetness to it. It lends really well to some recipes and salads. Star Veggie Burgers. I got the Mediterranean Chickpea one, which is 11 grams of protein in this bad boy. And I ended up getting the original Griller Morning Star. I've only really tried the Boca and Morningstar brands for these. Um, I do really enjoy the 
the star ones because they have a pretty good variety in the types of them that they offer. Um, now, I'm not a vegetarian or vegan or anything, but I do like to mix it up from doing kind of like chicken and turkey and like ground beef and stuff and throw in some vegetable substitute things like the veggie meatballs I showed you guys last week and um, these kind of veggie burgers. So I try to keep it, kind of mix it in and stuff. I find that um, my digestion is better if I'm not just eating heavy meats all the time. So let's get that. I like grilling those or popping them in the oven to have for veggie burgers. Um, this is a repeat buy of Power Waffles by Coconut Cake Brand. The benefit to these is that they are lower in sugar and higher in protein, so they don't give you the sugar crash that sometimes the Eggo waffles can, at least. Now that I'm not a kid or a teenager anymore, um, I find a sugar coma is easier to come by, even without eating anything too crazy. So, try to look for some of the healthier options of things that I still like to eat. And these are a pretty good way to still eat waffles and have them stick with you until lunchtime. Super tasty. I ended up getting some bananas again. These are a staple buy throughout the week. I usually have like one a day, either with some yogurt or chop it up over um, the waffles. Or just have one for a snack or with a protein bar or something. I do like the sound they make out of the, the banana squeak. Unfortunately this week they had some pretty nicely ripened ones. Um, not the most patient with fruit, so I'm now agreeing at the store. I'm like, dang, I gotta wait to eat these. Got some rainbow peppers here. I use these mostly for the make chicken cacciatore. Um, I'll put, chop these and put them up in a salad. Or this week I'm planning to put them in burritos. So, burritos I will make using that frozen corn. I'll chop these up finely and put them in. And I will also use black beans. The um, portion of the recipe that I make uses three cans of black beans. Um, it doesn't matter what brand, if you get like the bland brand or if you get. Um, like the generic brand, but I'm trying to shop efficiently right now, and these are in the same aisle with all of the rice and like the pasta stuff, so I'm picking up this brand. I also picked up some diced tomatoes, since those are included in the recipe for burritos. I do appreciate that on the, um, the Hannah Foods brand of this, they kind of show you what you're getting. At least the bowl reflects it. I know when I was trying to remember if Cacciatore took puree or sauce, it really helped me out because the puree, you could see that it was kind of self-standing in the bowl and the sauce didn't really have its integrity in the bowl, so that helped me determine what I needed. Also got some simple beginnings baby spinach. This is also really good in salads. Um, sometimes when I'm eating breakfast and I know that I need to get more vegetables in my diet, I'll just crack this open and have a couple of handfuls while I'm eating something tasty like waffles. Um, I also will put this in a smoothie and blend it up for some added greens that you can't taste, and because spinach is also really high in iron, which is great. 
especially if you work out quite a bit, which is what I do. I picked up another staple item for me. Some old-fashioned oats. I'm a big fan of oatmeal because I like how versatile it is. It can add so much to it. So, like in the fall, I'll buy some pureed pumpkin and I'll mix that in with some like nutmeg and cinnamon and get kind of like a pumpkin pie oatmeal, which is super tasty. And then in the summertime, I'll mix like those strawberries and blueberries, um, some nuts, sometimes a banana or something, and I add a little almond milk to cool it off and to make it um, a better consistency. always get that in bulk because I go through it so quickly. There was one time when I kept forgetting that I kept buying it, so I ended up with like three or four of those in the cupboard and was like, oh boy, as sometimes you just get to the store and I buy enough of the same things every week that I usually don't make a list unless there's some like really specific stuff that I need, either if I'm having like company come over and they like a specific beverage or snack or um, if it's something I haven't bought in a while. I'll make a list for it, but yeah, I for was forgetting to bring a list and I just kept buying it because I thought it was out. But here is a less frequent purchase because it takes a while to run out of this. Some Pam olive oil. This is really good um, for making sure your stuff doesn't stick to your non-stick pans. <laughs> um, I'm definitely guilty of making like a homemade pizza and not greasing enough of this or just kind of you know, swirling a little olive oil around the pan and calling it a day and then you're you need to straight up chisel your pizza out of your pan so this is very nice for that um also if you're making like eggs or something like that or um pancakes or anything like that useful um I like the olive oil version because it doesn't have a lot of a taste to it. Um, sometimes the like original butter flavor is a little weird to have um, when you're mixing it with like vegetables or something in the pan, so I like that version. Another repeat breakfasty buy. Some almond greens, almond milk, original flavor. I do prefer the unsweetened vanilla. The local grocery store has been kind of short on this stuff, so I'm taking whatever they are stocking. And I use this in cereals and smoothies. Um, for some baking, I will use this, but there's some stuff that it kind of you can tell you used almond milk if you're baking. Like I tried making cornbread at one point, and I ended up using vanilla almond milk in it, and it was just way too vanilla y. Um, when I was younger, I also made the mistake of I really wanted macaroni and cheese, so I figured, you know, almond milk, and then I had some nice vanilla macaroni and cheese, so, um, if I'm doing any, like, cooking or baking, I'll usually use, um, regular milk, but that's really good for adding sweetness to, like, a cereal or something, or to a smoothie. Little purchase and shredded wheat. And I think for those of us that enjoy shredded wheat, it's more the texture than anything. Um, since this isn't frosted or anything, it really doesn't have a whole lot of flavor. I just like how crumbly and crunchy they are. And they do come in big blocks. Like this might be a little exaggerated for the size, but. They're not the cute little mini wheats, they're, they're like a brick. I like crunching this up over some yogurt or um, it's kind of fun to like put it in a cereal bowl and soak it up with milk. It's just, it's more of an experience kind of food than it is a, a like, I'm craving the flavor of shredded wheat, but that was something that I saw at Jennifer's when I was walking through the cereal aisle. I was like, oh, that looks like fun. So I picked 
so no. Let's go see what else here. Have some wholesome harvest, nine green and seed bread. This is the Hannaford's brand bakery bread. I really enjoy it. Um, I keep it in the fridge here around because either it goes stale or it molds because it's the fresh kind of oatmeal preservative bread. Um, and I always end up toasting it for sandwiches with the toast, so that doesn't bother me if it's a bit cold to start. Really tasty. Um, the only thing that is kind of something to take into consideration with this kind of bread is all these little seeds will fall right off into your toaster. <laughs> um, so when I'm cleaning out my toaster or just, you know, kind of wiping down the counters and stuff like that, I always end up with these little things. Or you can hear them in the toaster popping, almost like popcorn kernel wood, which is kind of funny, but super tasty bread, makes for good sandwiches. Um, I'm definitely someone that prefers fresh bakery bread or semi-fresh that it's been made in the past couple of days versus um, like a Pepperidge Farm or a Fryhofer bread. Not that those are bad or anything, but I just really like fresh bread. This is a item that I purchase pretty frequently. This is Barney Honey Butter. I am allergic to peanuts, so I don't get to enjoy peanut butter. But this is a really good substitute in terms of consistency. One problem that I had for the longest time with almond butter is that all of it seemed to have a grain texture to it because they pretty much just ground up the almonds and maybe added a little sprinkle of salt in there and called it a day. Which there's nothing wrong with that if you like that texture or that um, kind of flavor of almond butter. But I wanted something that had the same smoothness um, and kind of sweetness that the peanut butter does. So Barney butter is definitely the answer if you want something that has pretty much the same exact texture. Um, and sweetness that a peanut butter would. I also make this in a chocolate almond butter. If you're looking for something that's similar to Nutella, but with a little bit of a different texture, then I feel like Nutella has a bit thinner, funnier of a texture than this. And this is like if you get your spoon stuck in it, so. <laughs> really good. Um, I have this on like toast. Um, I'll put it on waffles and things like that. Anything that you would use peanut butter for, you can use this for. Let's see. This and this have a bit of a story to them. Um, right now, as it is spring going into summer in the Northeast, we are having quite a few wasps. And I've, I've been in this house for three years and I've never seen as many wasps as I've seen this year. Um, usually we get like one or two by the shed and you can just kind of either ignore them or avoid them or you'll get an encounter where one makes it into the shed and you're also in the shed and you're either trying to shoo them out the door or slap them with something. But there's like two or three of them so you're not hopelessly outnumbered. This year I'm very outnumbered. So, um, I bought some commercial traps, um, I looked up a tutorial for making your own traps with bait. It is made out of fruit juice, um, water, active yeast that will help ferment the fruit juice to make it more fragrant for them and something that's more appealing. And then you put in a little bit of dish soap. One for the kind of poisonous effect and two to break the tension of the water. So when they go for the fruit juice, they don't land on the water, they fall into the water. So, and now I'm going to have to learn how to make some bread so that I can use up the rest of this because I used approximately like one teaspoon of this <laughs> for my whole trap. So, and in the event that the traps don't work or for more like of targeted warfare against the wasps. Um, I ended up getting 
and some just generic foaming spray. I have to empty the one out really early in the morning or none of them are awake and if I can see that there's like a specific paper nest that's been made I'll just soak it to try to get rid of them that way. Um, I'm pretty afraid of wasps but I'm more worried that like that like a neighbor's gonna get stung or if I get friends over at some point that someone's gonna get stung. I do also want to be able to open up the pool without fear like if there's a pool guy who's gonna open it getting stung or um, if I want to do some outdoor projects I would prefer not to have to just swat them continuously so that's the game plan there. Um, picked up some green tea, Bigelow. I'm trying to cut down on my coffee consumption because for a while um, when work was really picking up during the height of the virus and everything I was just drinking a lot of coffee to kind of get through it and um, at this time I really want to try to cut down a little bit on the caffeine so I'm trying to incorporate this with my breakfasts rather than having a cup of coffee and try to limit my, my coffee drinks down to like one or two a week instead of having them like every day or every other day so wish me luck there. Um, I have some Greek low fat vanilla yogurt habit brand so that's local or at least it used to be I hope it still is um, this is some really 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 good yogurt I am a person that really likes thick yogurt because it is the thicker it gets the more it reminds me of ice cream <laughs> and whatever flavoring they used in this yogurt is remarkably similar to French vanilla ice cream flavoring so this is as close as you're gonna get to ice cream while it's still being Greek yogurt <laughs> So really good. Um, I've been putting this on waffles. I've been mixing berries and fruit into this, eating it just plain out of the thing, <laughs> uh, mixing it in smoothies, and it's really good. Um, another fruity product that isn't edible. Nature's Promise cleaning wipes. So at the beginning of everything, um, I'm someone that buys cleaning products in bulk because I use them every week. Um, or multiple times a week so there's really no point in me buying like a teeny tiny container at a time and I figured you know like I'm pretty all set at the beginning of everything and um, I wouldn't run out but now I'm starting to run out of my my like Clorox and my Lysol wipes and stuff so these were the only wipes available at the store I'm a little skeptical of how well they disinfect so I've been using them as a secondary cleaning like for dusting or if I go over something with like some Mr. Clean or some like Clorox spray I'll go over it with this because it really um it really smells exactly as advertised like apples or I'll um take a pass over my phone or some stuff in my car that I want to clean off that isn't um too crazy these, um, they're pretty expensive, so I don't know if I'd buy them again. Um, they're really nice in terms of smell, so maybe if I was having company over or if there was, like, I don't have any pets, but if I had pet items that needed to smell nicer, I would totally go over them with this. It smells really good. And let me see, last but not least, I have a big old bag of Carolina brand basmati rice. So this is officially my favorite type of rice. I um, originally found this stuff kind of on accident. They ran out of the Carolina jasmine rice. I was like, well, it's another big bag of rice. Let's give it a shot. This stuff is super, super good. It's nice and light and fluffy. Like, it's unbelievably fluffy. Um, I never thought there could be that much difference between different rice types and different like grain sizes of rice. It's just got a super long grain and when you make it it comes out just like super airy and light. Like you could probably eat a few cups of this and it would feel like you're just eating air. <laughs> it's a very similar experience to eating rice cakes but super good. Um, it's 
pop a couple of rinsed cups of this into my rice cooker, add some water, close the lid and hit the button, and then about 30 or 40 minutes later I come back to delicious rice. <laughs> so, super tasty. Um, definitely, I believe having a rice cooker in the house is like a staple um, appliance. Definitely, like if any of my friends are moving into a new apartment or a new house or something, that's one of the first appliance related gifts I'll bring them if they don't have one because it's just so easy and you don't have to mess around with potentially burning the rice on the stove or having to like monitor your rice or anything. Just pop that in the rice cooker and forget about it. And um, yeah, that was um, pretty much the whole shopping haul for this week. Um, I will have to pick up some more hamburger buns this week for the morning star burgers, but I try to get those fresh that way I don't have to keep them in the refrigerator for too long. And um, I hope that you guys are having a good week and getting some nice sunshine and fresh air. I'm assuming it's not already at like 200 degrees where you live. And I wanted to say thank you guys for all of your support and for taking the time to watch and for all your feedback and suggestions and kind words in the comments. I super appreciate you guys and I will see you in the next video.